Hey, how's it going everyone? This is YLAM here. In today's Q&A video, I want to talk about taking sports pictures with your Fujifilm cameras, specifically the X-T series and also the X-H series. Now, what I want to do is I want to actually break it down into a couple of steps. And the reason why I want to do that is because this is actually a very complex subject. It's not something that you can cover very easily. And what I'm also going to tell you is that in order to implement everything that I'm going to suggest to you, you're going to have to do it over a series of events. In other words, I'm going to tell you to do these things over one event and then you start adding on to it until you actually get to what you are comfortable with, your own custom settings on how you want to take sports photography. So just keep that in mind. This is not something that you're just going to watch, implement all of it in one event and then start taking pictures. But let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that I want to show you is the basic settings that you want on your camera. Okay, let's go ahead and go over my recommended settings for sports photography. Keep in mind, these are only my recommendations. You can definitely fiddle with them to adjust it to how you like it, but these are my recommendations. The first thing that you want to do is you want to go ahead and set this over to continuous autofocus. So that's the C right here. So that's very easily done. Now, once the camera is set to continuous autofocus, what we want to do is we want to change our autofocus to zone autofocus. So that's very easy to do. If you hit the menu button and you go to AFMF, what you want to do is select that. If you go to AF mode, you can easily select zone and then you hit enter. So once we start the zone focusing, as you can see, when I move around, it'll go ahead and just track that pen with the many boxes. So this makes it very easy to track fast moving motion, especially for sports. So I always recommend it using zone focus. So this is definitely the recommended autofocus setting that I would go with first. The next thing that I would want to discuss is the different types of custom autofocus modes. Now, a lot of people will immediately start fiddling with this, especially three and five when you actually want to do sports. But what I would recommend you to do is actually stick with one for now, because there are definitely other things that you would want to learn before you start moving around and changing all of these autofocus settings. So before learning all of the custom autofocus settings, the thing that I would recommend you concentrate on is learning shutter priority. So shutter priority is having this in auto. So your ISO is in auto and also your aperture on your lens is in auto and then you manually control the shutter speed. So that is shutter priority. And for most sports, a lot of people recommend that you stick around the one one thousandth of a second to get really crisp images. There's a lot of times when you're actually taking sports photography when people misinterpret missing focus when they're actually seeing motion blur. So at one one thousandth of a second, you really don't get any motion blur, but this is a very high setting. So if you're going to be in a dark setting, going to one one thousandth of a second is going to be very difficult to have a low ISO if you have a very slow lens. But that's something that we can talk in depth in the next section. But really, when you first start off capturing sports, the first thing that we want to get out of the way and we want to make sure that it's happening is that you're not capturing any motion blur. So setting it to shutter priority, letting the camera pick the aperture and the ISO, and then setting it to one one thousandth of a second will allow you to stop all motion so that you know you're not getting any motion blur. Once you're used to capturing photography at one one thousandth of a second, then you can start actually cheating down a little bit. You can go down to 1 1 500, see if it's actually going to be any good, or you can go somewhere in between with your dot with your back command dial back here. And you'll notice that I can go to 1 800 of a second, or I can go to 1 64th of a second. And you can really kind of dial in the minimum shutter speed that you can use for the sport that you're trying to capture. That's definitely the first thing that I would recommend you learn. Once you've figured out what shutter speeds you want, you can actually go ahead and go to auto and then go back to aperture priority if depth the field is something that you want to work on because you're going to have an idea of what shutter speed that you want and as soon as your camera starts going below the shutter speed that you want you're going to naturally know what aperture you need to bump up to so that's really something that you really want to learn at the beginning before you really worry about any type of focusing is going ahead and using shutter priority making sure that you have a really high shutter speed so that you know you have all motion blur out of the way once you've learned that you can go ahead and go to aperture priority learn how to use 
use that and then you can kind of learn a mixture of both so you can actually set your aperture manually and you can also select your shutter speed manually and then the ISO will be decided by the camera but once you get to that point the camera can only control ISO so that's a lot more you're going to have to take care of which in most sports situations you want to simplify your life you don't want to have a very complex setup so you're going to have to be very comfortable your setup if you want to do something like that that's something that's really important to understand the last thing that I want to talk to you about is continuous shooting. As you can see on most cameras, there is a continuous low and a continuous high. One of the things that a lot of people do is they'll go straight to high and they just go ahead and ignore the low one. And this is not something that I would recommend. The reason why I say this is because in very challenging environments like low light, when you actually have a camera lens that's kind of slow, like an F5 lens, you might want to shoot to the, you might want to change to the continuous low, giving your camera more chances to actually work on that autofocus before taking that picture because if you're just taking a bunch of pictures of blurry images it's really not helping you out so you much rather have a lower setting being able to capture solid settings even though you're taking less pictures but you know that the autofocus system is actually catching up because in low light situations especially with slower lenses it is going to work a little bit slower so going with a continuous low might not be a bad idea so that you're going to get consistent sharp images as you're shooting. So now that we're done talking about the basic settings to your camera, we do have to talk about gear a little bit because it is kind of important and we do need to separate it into two groups. We have the high-end gear, so this is the red badge lens, so this is the 50 to 140 right here at f2.8. So this really is your best and only options for both indoor and outdoor photography if you want an all-one lens. Unfortunately, it's also very expensive, so for those of you who don't have that, you most likely have one of these lenses, which is is the 18 to 135 so the super zoom which on the long end so on the telephoto side it's an f 5.6 so it's a fairly slow lens and of course we have this one which is the 55 to 200 which is a very sharp lens and this is essentially an f5 on the telephoto side this is actually my favorite lens because of how you know versatile it is compared to the weight now there is one other lens which is the 50 to 130 so that's the xc lens that's the i guess the budget option and i really don't recommend that lens and the reason why is because on that particular lens on the telephoto side it's actually kind of soft whereas on the wide angle side it's actually much sharper so that's kind of backwards for a telephoto lens it's supposed to be sharp on the telephoto side and it can be soft on the wide angle side because it's a telephoto lens you want it to be sharp on that side i really don't recommend that lens but it does fall in the second category of slower lenses that we want to talk about so let's go ahead and talk about the high end which is kind of easy because if you own this lens it's going to make your life pretty easy because it's an f 2.8 so for indoor photography it's going to open wide open it's going to allow you to gather much more light which means you're going to be able to use those high shutter speeds but it's going to be lower on the iso curve this is really the only recommended lens and probably your only choice if you want to do indoor photography and you do want to do it fairly well the other option of course is the 200 f2 which is six thousand dollars and i don't really count that as an option for most of us so and i really haven't used it enough to really give you a great opinion except that it's awesome but it's still six thousand dollars so for this particular lens you're not going to have really any issues you're going to be able to use shutter priority and still get really nice depth of field because the camera is going to go ahead and open this up wide open it's going to make your life very easy if you actually have this lens so there's really not too much to talk about there you can just go ahead set it on shutter priority get it up to one one thousandth and you can kind of figure out where you can cheat but overall it's going to give you a very nice range and it's going to be very easy for you for indoor photography for outdoor photography you can go ahead and stop down on this to f8 get really sharp photography out of it it's not going to be an issue at all it's really great to use if you do want to take advantage of the f2.8 you're definitely going to want nd filters you can get a variable nd filter like i do because i really do like variable nd filters or you can just get one that's really strong like six stops and then bump up the iso a little bit if it gets a little bit too dark but if you want to take advantage of f2.8 in the outdoor situations definitely remember to bring nd filters with you a lot of the mid-range the high-end ones will also act like polarizers so you will get a little bit more color saturation 
application and it will just kind of look better overall. So those are my recommendations when I'm using this lens right here. Now, when you're using the lenses that are a little bit slower, this is where it's going to become difficult for you when you're actually taking indoor photography because you're not going to be gathering as much light. So when you go ahead and use shutter priority and you set it to one one thousandths, you're probably not going to like the ISO that you're going to be using. This is definitely where I start telling you, you need to figure out what your minimum shutter speed is and you need to actually stick with it so that you can get your ISO down as low as you can. Now, when you have one of these slower lenses, one of the tricks that I would recommend for you to actually kind of harness is being able to go from 1 1 thousandths to 1 1 500s all of the time. In other words, when you're taking pictures, you're always ready to actually switch between the two because a lot of times in sports, there's not a lot of motion going on. So if you actually don't see a lot of motion, but you want to take a picture, you can easily drop it down to 1 500 of a second and take crisp pictures. But when there's actually fast motion, when there's a break, you can bump it back up to 1 1 thousandths and start taking a picture there. So what I would recommend you learn is being able to toggle very quickly between 1 500s and 1 1 thousandths and taking your picture because you're going to have to cheat the shutter speed a little bit when you're working with these slower lenses. This is basically true for both of these lenses. Now let's go ahead and talk about the outdoors with both of these lenses. Since both of them have slower f-stops, you don't really have to worry about the shutter speed as much. You do probably want an ND filter with you, but if you actually forgot to bring one, you're probably not going to have to worry too much because most likely on your X-T3, it'll be able to handle the shutter speeds even at wide open at f5.6 or f5 for this particular one. But having an ND filter so that you can ensure you can at least get to the f5 position for both of these lenses would be pretty smart. You do want as much shallow depth of field as you can. It is always good to have ND filters with you. I'm just saying that with these two, you can kind of get away with it. With the 50 to 140, you really can't get away with it. You definitely want to make sure you pack an ND filter if you want to use that shallow depth of field. So now that we've talked about the gear and also shutter priority, aperture priority, and whether or not you should shoot in continuous high and continuous low, once you've mastered all of that, now is a good time to actually go into autofocus custom settings. So in here, you have a bunch of different settings that you can actually set your autofocus to. And the two that I actually like the most is usually three and five, although occasionally you might want to try four. So basically three through five might be very useful to you when you're actually doing sports. I would recommend starting off on three, then going to five, and then finally trying four. Those are my recommendations, but you can really try them in any order. But once you've actually mastered everything that I've already talked about, going in here and trying these different settings, you're probably going to notice a different feel to them. And then you can find the one that you actually like the most and then go ahead and use that for your different types of sports photography. That is my last recommendations to you, but it definitely is worthwhile to come in here and try these other settings. But I would not try any of those settings until you're very comfortable with everything else that we've already talked about. So that was a lot of conversations on what I recommend. So let me go ahead and wrap it all up just to summarize a little bit and then I will end this video. But basically what I'm trying to tell you is try these general settings first with the equipment that you have. Stick with the same equipment throughout a couple of events so that you can learn the equipment. Once you're comfortable with shutter priority, aperture priority, and the gear that you have, then you can actually start applying other things like going into more of a manual mode, which is using both a manual shutter speed that you set and also a manual aperture and then allowing the camera to adjust just the ISO. But as you learn your system, you're going to be able to do it pretty easily. Once you've learned all of this stuff, then I would recommend trying the different focus settings that's in your X-T3. That's when I would recommend going ahead and diving into the custom autofocus settings and then trying out which ones that you really like. That's going to be my recommended steps for learning how to do sports with your Fuji film systems. As I said, before, you're probably going to have to do this over a period of several events to learn all of this. And once you learn all of it, though, you're going to be very comfortable with your equipment and you're going to have your own style for shooting sports photography. Hopefully you've learned something and I've helped you out. But if you have any questions, definitely leave it in the comments below and I'll do my best to help you out. That's all I have for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.